Now joining me now is Mike Davis, Article 3 founder and president, as well as David Schoen, of course, former Trump impeachment lawyer. David, let's start with you. Um, it seems pretty clear what's going on here. They're, they're going to end up making this about obstruction instead of the retention of these documents so they can try to draw a distinction between what Biden did and what Trump did. Do you agree with that analysis? I think that's right. Um, the obstruction charge also carries the heaviest penalty, potentially 20 years. However, I want to get back to one thing that uh, Mr. Trustee said. Actually, under the section of the Espionage Act that they may be thinking of, which is 793E, um, that's, if they were smart, that's probably what they would charge, because it doesn't require them get into this whole classified documents issue. It has to be national defense information. And in that case, there are cases from D.C., Hitzelberger and others, that say you don't have to prove that he intended to injure the United States, like other sections of the Espionage Act, but you do have to prove that he acted willfully. Willfully in this conduct means knowing that he did something the law prohibited. Every one of the possible charges, including the obstruction uh, and including all the mishandling of documents charges, requires a state of mind, a mens rea, that's either willfully, intentionally, knowingly, or all of those things. This president did not have that state of mind. At no time do I believe he thought he was doing anything unlawful. But I'll tell you this. If they charge a 793E charge, this retention mm -hmm. of national defense information, I think President Biden probably has the most at risk here, because of all of those hundreds of documents there, you can be sure some of them contain what's broadly construed as national defense uh, information. President Biden's been in government for decades. Donald Trump was a businessman. President Biden knows that he had, didn't have the right to retain documents with national defense information, if that's the government's theory of the case. Wow, involving intent or no intent required to that, that's, <laughs> that is a big one. The Biden people must be shaking in their boots after that analysis. All right, Mike, there's some suggestion tonight that, and, and, we're, and we're going already to the timing of this trial, and we're going we're gonna to come back to some of the other substantive matters. But a lot of Americans tonight are thinking, wait a second, we got a presidential election over the next year, we got the primaries, we got the debates. And now we, ha we have the Justice Department's finger on the scale of our political system with this indictment. But when would a trial take place? Watch. But I, I find it hard to imagine how there is going to be a trial of these charges, which is what would, one would ordinarily expect sometime next year. I do agree with that analysis. You have a constitutional right to prepare your defense, to participate in your defense. So you have to build in even more time. Now we're where? A year from now? the summer of 2024, when we're right upon conventions, when we're months away from an actual presidential election, I don't think a judge is going to do that. Mike, your thoughts on that? Is that how you're seeing things, like any trial would not take place before the presidential election? It is very obvious that this was a political hit by Biden and Garland to take out Trump for the 2024 presidential election. They did this same play in 2016. Hillary Clinton got caught with her illegal home server as Secretary of State with our most classified secrets. It was hacked by foreign governments, maybe Russia. She destroyed it in the face of a congressional investigation. So what did the Justice Department do? What did the FBI do? They colluded with Hillary's campaign and Obama and Biden and the, the attorney general and the CIA director to come up with a Russian collusion hoax and crossfire hurricane investigation on Trump, right? And so Trump declassified these crossfire hurricane records via presidential memo the day before he left office. He had those down in Mar-a-Lago. That's what this raid was all about, was to get back these damning crossfire hurricane records. And he was allowed to have these under the Presidential Records Act. The Espionage Act does not apply, and Merrick Garland needs to look at a 2019 Office of Legal Counsel legal opinion binding on the Justice Department that you generally cannot obstruct investigations into non-crimes. It was not a crime for Trump to have his presidential records. David, do you agree with that in, in the way this is playing out now, a seven count indictment? Uh, we don't know exactly when it will be revealed. Mr. Trustee doesn't have it yet, and we're talking about it, but we get a, we get a general sense of what's in it. Yeah, I, I want to see the indictment. It's very important because each of these charges has separate, distinct elements to them. But all of this talk is right. I mean, the Presidential Records Act is going to be a key here. But again, the key is going to be the mens rea. And I believe whoever, whatever accounts they come up with of someone telling the president he could do this or couldn't do that, 
He was given advice that he could do what he did, and he believed that advice. But I'm going to tell you one of the worst things about all of this. Prudential principles of prosecution, reasonably applied in this case, would have led to no prosecution. It's important to have the country's belief in the integrity of the system. You have the same cabal of people, Andrew Weissman, Norm Eisen, Joyce Vance, pressing for a criminal prosecution. Weissman's connected with Lisa Monaco, the number two in the Justice Department, throughout their careers. They wrote a 186-page memorandum on why and how President Trump should be prosecuted. You have tens of millions of people who believe this shadow cabal operates behind the scenes, and now we have a document like this. We cannot continue down this path. There has to be no one's above the law, but everyone must demand the equal application of the law. It's a constitutional principle to which we're all entitled. Now, Mike, speaking of uh, Mueller's former pit bull, Andy uh, Weissman, uh, he's particularly worried about the venue in Miami. Watch. You're at the Justice Department. You may not really want Florida, but since that's a safe bet that all of the charges can be brought there, I think that would counsel a prudent prosecutor to go forward in Florida. It is harder for Donald Trump to attack a case if it is brought in Florida. Mike, wouldn't Trump want this case, obviously, to go forward in Florida? I mean, you have a, certainly a better shot to have an yeah. impartial jury there, yes? Yeah, I mean, of course he'd want this in Florida, but I don't know if that's the reason that Jack Smith would bring this in Florida. Maybe the reason Jack Smith brings this in Florida is there's that 2012 Obama ruling in the clinton Sotra case that a D.C. judge might have a hard time getting around where it's not binding on a Florida judge. So there are many factors involved. Of course, you'd rather be in Florida where it's not a Trump-deranged jury pool of, like, 93 percent Democrat and 99 percent of people in D.C. hate Trump. So, but there are many factors involved mm -hmm. here, and I just don't have any confidence Jack Smith will be fair. Now, Mike and David, stay with us. We'll get back to you.